Latin and Greek words fill the language of science, and a great place to see that is in the geologic time scale. We live here in the Holocene epoch of the Quaternary period, in the Cenozoic era, the most recent era of the Phanerozoic eon. Phanerozoic comes from the ancient Greek paneros, visible, and zdoe, life. By the way, I'm using the classical Attic pronunciation today. Modern Greeks pronounce these words phaneros and zoe. Thus, the Phanerozoic eon, eon comes from aion, meaning age or eternity, is when life forms are easily visible in the fossil record. Which means there must have been an eon in which the fossils aren't so easily visible. In fact, there are three more. The Phanerozoic is preceded by the Proterozoic eon, the Archean eon, and the Hadean eon. Proterozoic means earlier life, proteros, and Archean comes from Arche, Arche in modern Greek, meaning beginning, such as an Archean Hologos. The Hadean is named after Hades. Why would the first eon of Earth history be named after Hades? Well, the Hadean eon, which starts at about 4.6 billion years ago and goes to about 4 billion years ago, was when the Earth was still new and quite hot, regularly bombarded by asteroids, highly volcanic, and thus very few rocks survive from this time. The Archean eon was much calmer. The planet likely had little in the way of continental crust, and in these sprawling oceans, single-celled life got its start. Cyanobacteria developed photosynthesis for the first time, which dramatically changed the chemical makeup of the oceans and atmosphere. The Archean lasted from about 4 billion to 2.5 billion years ago. Billions and billions and billions. The Proterozoic starts at the end of the Archean, 2.5 billion years ago, and lasts till the beginning of the Phanerozoic, about 539 million years ago. In the Proterozoic, we find abundant soft-bodied multicellular organisms. But, amazingly, we have to pass eight-ninths of the whole history of the planet Earth before we get to what most consider the really interesting life forms. Most of the plants and animals that we know and love evolved in the last half a billion years of the last four and a half billion, which is pretty crazy if you think about it. The Phanerozoic eon is divided into three eras, the Paleozoic, the Mesozoic, and the Cenozoic. Paleozoic comes from Palaios, old, and of course, Zdoe, for life. In modern Greek, again, those are Palaios and Zoe. Mesozoic is the middle era from Mesos, and Cenozoic is from Kainos, Genos in modern Greek pronunciation, which means new. Era is from Latin aira, the plural of ice, meaning copper, bronze, or brass. And in a later context, in the neuter plural, aira came to mean counters, as in pieces of metal to count with, and thus became a new feminine singular word, aira, meaning era, an era from which time is reckoned. The Paleozoic is when the rocks at Niagara Falls were formed, in the Silurian period. The term period comes from the ancient Greek periodos, meaning the road around, thus a cycle of time. We'll talk in more detail about the fascinating periods of the Paleozoic era another time. Today, let's single out the earliest and most famous of its periods, the Cambrian. The Cambrian period hosts an explosion of complex life, with amazing fossils of organisms that would seem quite alien today. Since fossils tend to be rare in rocks prior to the Cambrian, the Cambrian itself is an important division in Earth history. For simplicity, we call everything before the Phanerozoic Eon, meaning the Proterozoic, the Achaean, and the Hadean, pre-Cambrian. The Cambrian period is from the Latin name for Wales, Cambria, where many Cambrian Age rocks are exposed in Britain. The three most famous periods of Earth history are undoubtedly those of the Mesozoic, the Triassic period, the Jurassic period, and the Cretaceous period. And rightly so. This is when our favorite ancient animals, the dinosaurs, first evolved and came to dominate the Earth. And some of them still rule the skies today. The Triassic is named after a succession of three distinct rock layers formed in this period, visible in southern Germany. The three layers form a recognizable triad, thus Trias. Many Triassic rocks in western North America are often typified by their red color, as we saw in the video on Devil's Tower in Wyoming where dark red sandstone and maroon siltstone deposited in a very shallow sea can be seen along the Belfourche River. The Jurassic period is named after the Jura Mountains in Switzerland, and Jura Mons receives an important mention in the first book of Caesar's Gallic Wars, when he describes the territory of the Helvetii, who are boxed in by their own geography. Undique logi natura Helvetii continentur, 
un ex parte flumine reno latissimo ad qualtissimo, qui agroalueti a germanis dividit. Alder ex parte monte iura altissimo, quest intersequano set aluetios. Tertia la cule mando et flumine rodano, qui pro inchian nostram ab aluetis dividit. The Cretaceous period gets its name from Latin creta, meaning chalk. There are extensive chalk deposits from the Cretaceous, formed in shallow seas across the continents, such as the Western Interior Seaway. The oldest rocks exposed at Badlands National Park, which we saw in detail in this video, were deposited in the Western Interior Seaway of the Cretaceous. The Mesozoic era ends with a great extinction event, precipitated by the Chicxulub impact about 66 million years ago. What follows is the Cenozoic, the New Life era. The Cenozoic is divided into three periods, the Paleogene, the Neogene, and the Quaternary. The Paleogene and Neogene were once called the Tertiary Period. It was actually quite recent that this name change became official. When I was studying geology in university, Tertiary was still widely used and accepted. The names Quaternary and Tertiary are from early attempts in the 18th century to understand the geologic timescale, in which Earth history was divided into Primary, Secondary, Tertiary, and Quaternary rocks. Paleogene is the Palaion Genos, the old offspring from Gignomai to be born, related to Genesis and genetic. Neogene is from Neos, meaning new or young. The epochs in the Cenozoic have a nice progression. Paleocene, Eocene, Oligocene, Miocene, Pliocene, Pleistocene, and Holocene. We already know the scene part is from Gainos, meaning new, which gives us this fun oxymoronic term, Paleocene, the old new. Eocene is from Eos, the dawn. This is when the igneous intrusion of Devil's Tower formed. It's amazing how the formation of the surrounding sedimentary rocks is separated from the formation of the tower itself by about 200 million years. This is what I was talking about when I said, that's what's so amazing about geology is that we can see history literally unearthed before us. And then when we learn how to read the book, we can understand, wow. The Eocene is also when the rocks of the Shadron Formation in Badlands National Park were deposited. Just imagine these two events happening simultaneously. Remember all the volcanic ash in the Shadron Formation? Some of it could have come from very nearby. Oligocene is from oligos, meaning some or a few, such as an oligarchy. The Brule Formation in the Badlands was deposited in the Oligocene Epoch. Miocene is from Meon, Meon in modern Greek pronunciation. Note how epsilon iota goes from E in classical Greek to E by classical Roman times. Thus it regularly has the long E sound in Latin, and into English, the long Latin E sound becomes I. See these videos to learn more about this aspect of ancient Greek pronunciation. Pliocene is from pleon, more, pleon in modern Greek pronunciation. Pleistocene is from pleistos, pleistos in modern Greek pronunciation. Pleistos, which later is pronounced pleistos by classical Roman times, is Latinized pleistos. So it has the long E vowel, which in English comes to be pronounced I. So it should be written like this, Pleistocene, but doing so would obscure the long I sound as we think of it in English. So for that reason, I can kind of accept the irregular spelling with the E-I. But there's still no excuse for spelling Poseidon this way. That's just a mistake. The Pleistocene is famous for having the ice ages, the glacial and interglacial periods. The ice ages are what gave rise to the Great Lakes, as discussed in this video. When the last glaciation ended and the current interglacial period began, that marks the beginning of the Holocene, the wholly new epoch, from Holos, whole. Holos and whole are not cognates, interestingly. Their similarity is just a coincidence. Niagara Falls, as we know it, formed in the Holocene. So the naming scheme for the Cenozoic epochs goes like this, from present to the past. Holocene, wholly new. Pleistocene, fully new. Pliocene, more new. Miocene, less new. Oligocene, a little bit new. Eocene, dawn of the new. Paleocene, the old new. So that's an introduction to the Latin and Greek and the geologic time scale. It was thanks to my already knowing Latin and Greek that when I started studying geology, it was a breeze. If you want to learn more Greek and Latin terms used in science, check out these videos. And stay tuned for the next adventures we are soon to embark upon as I continue to take you through the glorious natural wonders of the West. Thanks for subscribing and sharing, and thanks especially to my Patreon supporters. Well, thank you.